Alien's Dark Descent is a pretty hard game, especially in the beginning, so you might want to know some valuable tips that can make things a little less complicated and stressful when you first start out. Don't worry, I got you covered. The ARC, that's the armored vehicle that brings you to every mission, is incredibly overpowered, so make use of that. Use it to relocate your marines, secure any survivors, and most importantly, as an insanely powerful alien killing machine. The ARC is incredibly valuable when massive alien onslaughts are happening, as the ARC will kill any aliens that come towards its radius. While it's not an instant kill, it does have very powerful, unlimited projectiles that will make quick work of most aliens. Combine that with the four marines you're controlling, and with a bit of tactical play, you should be able to survive any massive onslaught, at least in the beginning of the game. The ARC can be directed to specific locations, so make sure you recall and retreat to these spots whenever you need some extra firepower. With a daily deployment limit and increasing alien aggressiveness, trying to complete tasks efficiently does of course matter. However, it's still always better to extract your squad and call it a day, when things are getting overwhelming instead of risking your entire squad. When things are extremely stressful on both you and your squad, Worst case scenario is one or more squad members will suffer severe trauma or death. To prevent that, always have an escape route in mind as things can go wrong very quickly. You are unable to remove a trauma from your marines until you unlock the psychiatric care unit in the medical quarters, so avoid traumas and death at all costs. Try to get a marine to level 3 as soon as possible, because once your marines reach level 3 by gaining XP throughout missions, there are two random classes, out of the available five, to choose from to promote your recruits. Your marines will gain unique abilities corresponding to the chosen class, as well as carry specific weapons. The Recan class is an excellent choice, allowing your marine to equip a sniper rifle and perform the precision shot skill. Map insight and a general overview of your surroundings is essential in this game, and the motion tracker, which you have activated by default once you get it in the prologue is your best friend when it comes to awareness of your enemies, as they can theoretically give you full coverage of the map. Your motion tracker will let you know of nearby enemies in form of white dots on your map and minimap. But you are not limited to your standard motion tracker. Very soon you will unlock deployable motion trackers, which will cost one resource to deploy, but can be the difference of life and death. Plant your motion tracker at the location you plan to use as an escape route or come back to and it will remain at the location and send you a signal of all enemies in its radius. Your motion tracker will remain there even when you extract and come back later, unless you decide to destroy it, which will aggro all enemies to the motion tracker's location. While it shows you how in the tutorial, beginners should pay attention to welding doors. Welding doors, like most actions, will cost one resource, but will allow you to create a shelter. For this reason, well, choose door. a room with ideally one, or well, maximum yes. two doors for your shelter. Once your shelter is created, you'll have the option door to rest your squad, which is extremely useful in reducing stress levels. Suppressive fire is a skill that is pretty much considered mandatory in many encounters and should be used frequently. It costs one command point to use and makes enemies move at 70% movement speed. Along with that, your marine's firing rate is doubled. This is an excellent skill to use when you're defending yourself against a wave of enemies, especially when they are only coming from one direction. This skill is even more powerful when combined with a stasis grenade. Your marines can walk and fire, but they cannot run and fire. So when your intention is to kill your enemies, do not order your marines to run, as they will not be able to shoot at enemies while doing so. Generally speaking, the game doesn't reward XP for simply defeating enemies. The exception are horde attacks, which do yield XP. The principal method for gaining XP is through successful completion of mission objectives. Because of that, it's advisable to bypass fights whenever practicable. The game is continuous, so keep that in mind at all times when making decisions. This means all progress you make on a location will be saved. By all progress, I mean all progress. Resources will also not respawn once collected. Use your flashlight frequently, as it does not only provide better vision, but also highlights all interactive objects, making it much easier to find resources and data pads. And that pretty much sums up the key insights you need without spoiling too much. If you found this video helpful, consider leaving a like. 
and subscribe to my channel if you want to help me reach 1000 subscribers by the end of the year. See ya!